Joining me for more on the war in Ukraine is Michelle Agatiche, a legal practitioner and foreign affairs analyst. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me on the program. I'd like to begin. Uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin is in Iran uh, for only his second foreign trip since he launched the invasion of Ukraine in February. How important do you think is this contact with Iran at this time? Well, thank you very much, Millicent, for having me. Um, I think that it's quite important um, because this is a time where the international community has tried to more or less utilize, uh, you know, basically making Russia a pariah nation as one of the ways to win the war in Ukraine. Now, seeing that Russia is still on the table, and not only on the table, a significant power broker in that region, of course, will, you know, send alarm bells ringing, particularly in Washington. But just to say, though, that in terms of the impact for this war, I do not see that to be so significant. And the reason is simple. Uh, prior to the Ukraine war was the issue in Syria. And the primary focus of this trilateral meeting between Iran, Turkey, and Russia is Syria on the agenda, issues relating to how Turkey is going to deal with potentially expanding the safety zone. As you would recall, Turkey backs the rebels, whereas Iran backs the Syrian government. So those are the critical issues. So despite the fact that the Ukraine matter will come up, the impact it would have, um, I don't see to be so significant because despite the fact of the Ukraine war, Russia still remains a critical player in resolving the conflict in Syria, which has also dragged on for almost a decade now. Many have wondered what, you know, they might conclude, and this is saying the re-emergence of these three countries, Russia, Turkey, Iran, you know, many wonder what could be the alliance, especially now, considering the positions that, you know, these countries have take, are taking, and this is concerning the war in Ukraine, uh, U.S. officials accusing Tehran planning to supply Russia with drones, and then we have the role Turkey is playing with supplying uh, Ukraine, of course, um, drones, combat drones to the Ukrainian military. Yes, I mean, it's a, it's a very interesting time in world geopolitics, if I could say so. And why that's also very interesting is the fact that prior to the arrival of Putin today, yesterday, um, Renkamp Erdogan and the leader of Iran um, entered into a 20-year um, bilateral agreement wherein they um, agreed to even upscale um, bilateral trade between the two countries to, I believe, about $35 billion. Now, that is inherently problematic for the other side of the international divide. Why? Because Iran, as we would all recall, prior to the Ukraine war, was the pariah nation. And Turkey, on the other hand, is a member of NATO. And in fact, recently, despite the fact that Renkap Erdogan had acceded to, you know, Finland and um, Finland joining mm. NATO, um, you know, further even stated a couple of days ago that, look, you know, they can still decide not to accede to that in parliament. So I don't see the end goal here, but I definitely see that this is something that is going to signal alarm bells and also feeds into that conversation about a new world order, particularly when you look at the increasing cooperation, for example, between Russia and China. So if you bring Iran into the mix, Iran, who is also a major supplier of oil and gas, and we understand what's going on in the oil and gas space, particularly as it relates to increased um, you know, prices of everything really in Europe right, in terms of food security. So it's almost like that kind of conversation or that kind of statement from Russia saying that, well, you can't get me out of the, you can't get me out of the game. You can't take my significance away. And, um, you know, your, your trade bites aren't hurting me. Try harder. Exactly. Extremely keen to show that the international sanctions have failed to isolate it. But, um, are uh, friends sticking around? Does Russia have any friends at this time? Well, I, I'm not sure. I wouldn't say that they have friends. I would just say that certain interests are still superseding, right, concerted international efforts to stop the Ukraine war. And that, of course, is as a result of, you know, Russia's 
you know, behemoth role that they play, particularly in the energy space and how important energy is to many economies. There are some significant economies that are still trading and dealing with Russia almost as normal. You have India, which is one of the biggest economies in the world at the moment. You have China, who has a bilateral relationship with Russia that was signed after the invasion of Ukraine, and a relationship that we basically stated in the text of those documents, that it is a friendship with no limits. You have Iran, who is still looking to Russia as a broker in terms of dealing with Turkey. And of course, you also have Turkey, which to some are saying that, well, even though they seem on the face of it to be supporting Ukraine, for many, they have also questioned how far they really are going. So I think it's a situation of almost power blocks, if you may. What I fear is us going back to what we had pre-1990s before, you know, um, Gorbachev and everything, where you had, you know, a clear distinction in the world, you know, during the Cold War, where you had those who followed the path of Russia and those who had the path of USA. Why? What could then potentially happen is a situation where you have micro wars in different smaller states. And as we all know from the African scene, when two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. Somewhat, some BFF still exists in geopolitics. Um, in terms of this meeting, they're also going to be looking at grains, grain exports uh, from Ukraine. There are allegations that, um, you know, uh, Russia is shelling that and preventing that passage. Do you think that Turkey can broker a tentative agreement between Russia and Ukraine leaders? Well, I would hope that they will be able to broker some. Um, I understand that even aside from Turkey, um, even those in some of the Western countries are also trying to broker some form of agreement. And I think this is something that is particularly important, even for us that live in Africa, for example. Um, a lot of the grain that comes into Africa comes from Ukraine. Um, you know, they're one of the largest producers of wheat, ETC. Now, to the extent that the port of Odessa remains blockaded, um, you know, we might have a real situation of excessive famine. Right. And we will then be a byproduct of the war, uh, you know, even though we have for most of it been an innocent bystander. So even though I cannot say whether, in fact, the Turks will be able to broker some sort of palliative deal, if I may use that word, I would hope for it for the best interest of even us mm -hmm. <laughs> right across on the screen. Indeed, and the larger population. We appreciate your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you join us. Mitchell Agatache is a legal practitioner and foreign affairs analyst. Thank you again. Millicent, it's always my pleasure. Thank you very much.